السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This is Al-Jawmin uh, Welcome to this video uh, We're going to talk about a very important uh, topic We're going to talk about the technical uh, writing It's a very uh, critical uh, issue that many people uh, face uh, How to represent your uh, work How to write about uh, the technical or your research Work, it is not easy for the beginners. Uh, you have to uh, follow a, a specific procedure. This is what I'm gonna to, uh, talk about uh, now, okay? So let's begin. So the basics of the technical writing here, we're gonna talk about the common words, the words that must be avoided, uh, what's an abstract, writing strategies, using adjectives, uh, can or may, cannot, uh, cinnaron, clauses, uh, the coherence, uh, collaborative uh, writing, tasks of the collaborative writing team, uh, conciseness, the conclusions and recommendations, and the correspondence and accuracy. So, the way to write uh, before we start. Okay, it's very uh, good for you. And book of technical writing, you'll find a lot of things here. We're gonna cover some of it and you have to uh, read this book by yourself. So the way to write, so passive clauses are only used. Do not use, we carried out an experiment or I uh, used uh, a thermocouple for the measurement. No, do not use I or we, just Use this method. An experiment was conducted or was carried out to study the, okay? Or uh, experiments were carried out or conducted or have been, or has been. Do not use we or I. This is not, this is unacceptable. Because if you use I or we, I really do not care. Okay, I don't care about we or I, I only care about the scientific procedure. That's why you have to use uh, has been or have been or was or were carried out, okay? Also, you must mention the references that you uh, used. Uh, in other words, the literature, you have to carry out a literature review. According to John Jones, a researcher, uh, and uh, this researcher published a paper or published a thesis and you used some of uh, his work and of course you have to know the plagiarism that you cannot copy and paste uh, his exact lines you have to uh, rewrite it by uh, yourself and having the same meaning okay so according to John, and John is number one, so put your number of the reference, we're going to talk about this uh, detail, these details later. Uh, for many references, also you can uh, write according to one to five. One to five, uh, at the reference section, you will find uh, the names and the titles of these papers. Can, or may, can refers to capability. I can have a project finished today but may, may refers to possibility. So I may be in Boston on Monday or permission. May I ha leave early? So you have to know how uh, to, uh, when you uh, use can in your paper or uh, use may, okay? You have to know the differences. Cannot, cannot is written like this. C-A-N-N-O-T, do not make it can and then space and not, okay? Those are the common mistakes in writing. So the maximum number of words of a sentence should not be greater than 24 words. Do not exceed uh, 24 or uh, the sentence will be very, very long and this is also unacceptable. Avoid long closes and long stories. To the point, this means that you have to focus many times a step. Do not use many, many words, okay? 
Uh, also, the capitalization, uh, if you uh, write something that HVAC or ASHRI, HVAC is the heating, ventilation of air conditioning, and the ASHRI, the American Society, uh, or the uh, ASTM, the American Society, or uh, the ASME, or these things that the engineers use, uh, you have to write it uh, like this, or use a software or a trademark. You have to write it as this, okay? Cineron, use the phrase Cineron in writing, uh, not Cineron. So this, uh, the experiment Cineron, the new uh, discovery. Do not use Cineron, okay? So here is the Cineron uh, phrase. So Cineron is illogical because around does not refer to a center and so cannot be around anything. Also site, site, site. Cite means acknowledge or quote and authority, okay? The speaker cited uh, several environmental experts, but sight is the ability to see. He feared that he might lose his sight. Sight, the third is the third one is a plot of land, okay? A construction site. The clarity. Clarity is essential to effective communication with your readers. You must learn how to be clear. Okay, you cannot achieve your purpose or a goal like persuasion without clarity. Do not, uh, like I said, do not use long words. Do not use uh, the uh, strange words that uh, are not common. Okay, use clear words that can describe your point. Many factors contribute to clarity, just as many other elements can defeat it. So avoid isolated thoughts. Uh, you have to uh, learn how to be organized. Do not talk about uh, something and then uh, suddenly you talk about another thing in the, uh, the same section. This is unacceptable for the research paper or for the technical writing. So a method of development and an outline that puts your thoughts into a logical, meaningful sequence brings coherence as well as unity to your writing. This is the uh, unclear image that we're talking about. If you do not know how to be clear or you use uh, something that not, many people do not know uh, it's meaning the image will not be clear like this. Clear transition contributes to clarity by providing the smooth flow that enables the reader to connect your thoughts with one another without uh, conscious effort. Okay, so the clear transition, it means that you have to uh, set an introduction, write an introduction, and then gradually you uh, talk about the other, the another, the other step uh, smoothly. Do not jump, okay. Do not use the jumping method uh, in writing. This will uh, uh, open uh, a lot of questions or uh, generate a lot of questions, and you will make your reader. Uh, he will tell you, "I'm sorry, I do not get the point from your paper. You are not clear, okay." Proper emphasize and uh, subordination and uh, are mandatory. Mandatory uh, if you wanna achieve clarity. Okay, you have to know when you uh, use must or when you use uh, the words that you can emphasize on something. Okay. Uh, if you do not use those two complementary uh, techniques wisely, all your clauses and sentences will appear to be of equal importance. So do not spin in a vicious circle, okay? You have to uh, add val a value, a new value by each new sentence. Each sentence or each new sentence must add a new thing. The cliches, cliches do not use, instead of use all over the map, 
you scattered or unfocused. Gentlemen, the resource writing or the technical writing is completely different from writing a romantic story or another uh, regular book. Okay? There are many sentences that you can avoid. All over the map, it can be used in a story, but you have here to use scattered or unfocused. The game plan, uh, use strategy or schedule. Uh, last but not least, do not use this. You just use last or finally, we got the results and the results lead to something. And uh, also here the coherence, writing is coherent when the relationships among ideas are clear to readers. The major components of coherent writing are a logical sequence of related ideas and clear transitions between those ideas like exactly what I have just said. And here is the uh, very important point now is the collaborative uh, writing. Collaborative writing occurs when two or more writers work together to produce a single document for which they share responsibility and decision-making authority. Okay, here we're talking about the teamwork. The teamwork, suppose that you are in a graduation project and you have to uh, write a technical book that describes your uh, work through the semester, but you're gonna write it you, with your friends. Here is a big deal. So collaborative writing teams are formed when the site of the project or time constraints imposed on, on it require a joint effort. The project involves multiple areas of expertise. The project requires the melding of divergent views into a single perspe uh, perspective that is acceptable to the whole team or to another group. Of course, everyone has uh, his own or her own uh, point of view. So different uh, point of, points of view uh, must be uh, collected into a single perspective, okay? Uh, why? Because we're gonna uh, read this book as a single book, not many books, okay? So many types of collaborations are possible, from the collaboration of a primary writer with a variety of contributors and reviewers to a highly interactive collaboration in which everyone on a team plays a relatively equal role in shaping the document. And here we're gonna talk about uh, how to uh, help yourself and how to help your uh, colleagues. So the tasks of the collaborative uh, writing team. The collaborating team strives to achieve a compatible working relationship by dividing the work in a way that uses each writer's expertise and experience to its advantage. Okay, here you have to uh, know exactly how can I take a benefit from this friend, okay? Uh, people are not the same. Everyone has his own personality and his own ability to do something. So the team leader must know uh, the skills of each uh, person, okay? So the team should also designate or uh, designate a coordinator who will guide the team members' activities, organize the project, and ensure coherence and consistency within the document. The coordinator's duties can be determined by mutual uh, agreement assigned by management or assigned on a rotating basis if the team uh, often works together. Uh, also, the planning, the planning the team members collectively identify the audience, purpose, context, and the scope of the project. Okay, the team members, all of them, must work together to determine these uh, four things. At this stage, the team establishes a project plan that may include guidelines for communication among team members, how we're gonna communicate, how we're gonna talk to each other, how uh, can we meet, 
uh, also the version uh, control naming dating and managing document drafts how we're gonna uh, check out our drafts and these kind of things review procedures and writing style standards that team members are expected to follow of course every organization uh, has uh, its own uh, format in uh, the technical writing so the uh, team leader must know uh, these formats to uh, tell the other team members about it okay the plan includes a schedule with due dates for completing initial research tasks outlines drafts reviews revisions and the final document deadlines must be met because team members rely on each other and one missed deadline can delay the entire project a missed project deadline can result in a lost opportunity or in the case of proposals disqualify an application so of course uh, the team members must be uh, uh, flexible and uh, respect that uh, their work will help the others in doing the job okay so individual writers must adjust their schedules and focus on their own writing process to finish drafts and meet the deadline those for the individual writers research and writing uh, the team next completes initial research tasks uh, elicits Comments from team members creates a, bo a broad outline of the document and assigns writing tasks to individual team members based on their experts. Okay, everyone uh, must know uh, what is the best uh, that he can do. How can I do my best to uh, make this project succeed? Okay, depending on the project, each team member further research and an assigned an assigned segment of the document expands and develops the broad outline and produces a draft from the detailed outline gentlemen every team uh, member must uh, write a draft for his work and then he must share his draft to be checked by the other team members to tell uh, him uh, some recommendations and some uh, other things that he has to follow Reviewing, so keeping the audience's uh, needs and the document's purpose in mind. Every team member must remember the uh, final target from the document. If you write a technical paper or a research paper about something, so you must remember all the time the target from this research paper, uh, why we carried out these uh, experiments, why we carried about, out uh, the numerical simulations on the computer software, these things are very important. From the overall organization to the clarity of each paragraph and offers advice to help improve uh, the writer's work. Team members can easily uh, solicit feedback by sharing files and then working with Track and comment features that allow reviewers to suggest changes without deleting the original text. Okay, this is very critical. Why this will save the time? Also, revising in this final stage, individual writers evaluate their colleagues' reviews and accept, reject, or build on their suggestions. Okay, so then the team coordinator or the team leader can. Uh, consolidate all drafts, all drafts into a final master copy. That's why the uh, team coordinator must be selected carefully because uh, his job is not like the others and he has to uh, get the drafts and uh, write it into a final master copy and maintain and evaluate it for consistency, tune, and coherence as you cooperate be ready to tolerate some uh, disharmony but temper it with mutual respect okay do not attack your uh, your friends do not criticize them uh, do not be harsh 
Okay, just uh, take it e take it easy. And team members may not agree on every subject, of course, and differing perspectives can easily lead to conflict. Ranging from mild differences over minor points to major showdowns. Okay, so you have to be, take it easy and know that uh, each one uh, can make mistakes. And how to tolerate these mistakes is very good. However, creative differences resolved uh, respe uh, respectively can energize the team and in fact strengthen a finished document by compelling writers to re-examine. Okay, this is the uh, good procedure. Write as a checklist uh, writing collaboratively. Designate one person as the team coordinator. This is the first thing. Identify the audience. What does this mean? You have to know, you must know uh, who will read your work. Who? So this is a very important point. Uh, your friends will read it only or your professor or uh, many researchers, okay? So identify the audience, the purpose, the context, and the scope of the project. Create a project plan including a schedule and style or format standards. Create a working outline of the document. Assign sections or tasks to each team member. Research and write drafts of each document section. Use the agreed upon standards for style and format. Exchange sections for team member reviews. Revise sections as needed. Meet the established deadlines for drafts, revisions, and final versions. Each, each team member or each one uh, must meet the deadline uh, of submitting the draft to the coordinator uh, to check it out and share it with the other friends, okay? Gentlemen, now we're gonna talk about writing a research article. First, the abstract, introduction, main topic, results and discussion, conclusion and recommendations, acknowledgement, references. We're going to talk about the abstract a handbook of technical writing, the uh, 11th edition. This is the, uh, the book that I have just shown uh, to you. Here, the abstract the abstract of any research paper must include these things the purpose, the first line, you have to talk about the purpose of this research paper, uh, use the descriptive section of the work and methods and the scope. And also, you must talk about some findings and uh, some results. Use uh, uh, numbers. Also, you have to write the conclusions and the recommendations. Then you can write the keywords. Okay, the keywords. Of course, you have to select the uh, keywords that describe uh, your paper in details or in short. I mean, I mean to the point. Then the introduction it includes some concentrated points related to the main topic of the paper. Uh, it's a quick view over the literature that has already been published. For example, published research articles, you can use them. Theses, uh, scientific books or, and standards, you can use these things to make a literature review. The authors should talk about the most recent articles and their most important findings. The introduction should not exceed two A4 pages. More than this is not acceptable or unacceptable because uh, the journal that you will uh, publish your paper in uh, will, uh, has standards and uh, has a specific number of papers that you should not exceed. If you exceed this number, you will pay money. The majority of uh, the search uh, or journals are free. If you exceed a number of, uh, of a specific number of pages, you will pay for each additional paper or additional page. Then the main topic, you have to talk about the methodology. Uh, it's a detailed description about the way you did the research or carried out the experiments. For example, the experimental procedure that has been used to carry out the experiment. 
For the analytical research, the complete description of the mathematical model should be included. The accuracy of the measuring tools must be included with the, an, an, the uncertainty analysis, otherwise the paper will not be published or will not be accepted for publishing. What does this mean? If you carried a, an experiment uh, in the laboratory, uh, you of course will use uh, measuring devices or measuring tools like a thermocouple or something that uh, measures the uh, pressure, okay? Of course, these devices or these measuring tools uh, have uncertainty limits, plus minus 0.01, for example. So, here, to get the uncertainty analysis, you the uncertainty analysis uh, using engineering equation solver. Uh, please watch this uh, video uh, by Professor Greg Nels, the University of uh, Wisconsin Madison, United States. Uh, it is very informative, and you will learn how to uh, calculate the uncertainty analysis. Okay. High resolution and expressive figures must be included to show the real experiment and the analytical model. Tables can be added to let the readers get the information that is related to the experiment or the mathematical model. For example, the operating conditions that were set for the experiment and the boundary conditions for the numerical models have to be uh, mentioned or must be written in these tables or uh, you have to mention about it. Like this, uh, this is from a research document and this is the, its title, uh, room heat gains, thermal mannequins, mannequin, uh, anesthesia uh, machine, and some information that were used for the simulation. Uh, number four, the results. Uh, the results. The results should include the expressive plots and graphs that can tell the readers about the findings. The analysis must include new findings and it must be clear and to the point. Okay, each plot or each graph must add a new analysis or another uh, new point of view. Each figure should give the readers a new addition or assure on a specific point, but in a different way. Like this, also from the same paper, uh, you can measure uh, the velocity and divide it by uh, the other velocity or the reference velocity, and then you can uh, tell us uh, your analysis here. Also, you can uh, measure another quantity like the turbulence intensity and this will lead to another point of view or to assure on the previous uh, point of view, okay? So this uh, figure and this is another figure, you can make these things, okay? Then you can write the conclusions and recommendations. The conclusion must include only the trends and the most important results without getting through the details like the results section. Just Tell us uh, what are the main co conclusions from your paper. For example, the results and discussion section has showed many plots about many measurements about a centrifugal pump. On the other hand, the conclusion should give the reader the summary of the results. For example, it was found that it's changing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the geometry of the impeller affects the and also the pump performance increased by uh, 0.1% due to this. This uh, pattern can be used in the conclusion, just in short. Do not talk about the details in, like uh, the uh, previous section, okay? Of course, the acknowledgement, if anyone funded this research or helped you you have to mention his name or the name of the organization. All the organizations or people who support the research must be included in acknowledgement section. Suppose that uh, the experiments were carried out at the laboratory of a 
college or uh, of a specific university. So you, you have to say that the researchers are grateful uh, to uh, the Faculty of Engineering or the University of uh, or uh, their, the experiments were carried out at the lab, in the laboratory of University of Cincinnati, something like this. Okay, uh, what if someone helped you uh, uh, in the research so you can write uh, the researchers are grateful to Mr. or Doctor or Professor and you have to mention his name uh, for his great support uh, of this research, okay? So those are great, like this, who supported this research by or the experiments were carried out at the laboratory of College of. The seven, uh, seventh thing here, all the references that have been mentioned in the paper must be included in this section. The format of writing the references differs from journal to journal, so you must know the format of the journal that you will deal with it. Deal with. Okay, writing a research thesis and a technical book is different from writing a paper in the shape or the for uh, the form we will start with the summary acknowledgements table of contents list of figures nomenclature chapter one two three four five and references and appendix okay so we're going to now uh, check out a paper. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, after finishing uh, the presentation, now we have to do, take a look on a published uh, research paper. Uh, this paper uh, was published in Journal of Flow Control, uh, Measurement and Visualization. This is not my paper, okay? So it's experimental investigation of operating room air distribution in a full-scale laboratory chamber using particle image velocimetry, uh, velocimetry and flow visualization. And here's the copyright. So we can take a look on the paper, the abstract, keywords, introduction, methodology, and flow visualization and results after the results conclusions and the acknowledgements and the reference exactly like what we have just talked about okay so let's take a closer look on each section here so the abstract not the abstract it should not exceed uh, 300 words, okay? Should not exceed, it's better to make it 300 words as maximum because some journals do not, does not accept more than this. 261, okay? So this is good. So here we can see that uh, the room air distribution in hospital operating uh, room is critical to the effective functioning of surgical procedures. Then, but the air distribution patterns are governed by complex physics that are currently not well understood. Okay, thank you. Then both qualitative and quantitative flow visualization techniques were used. Notice that they used were used. They did not. Uh, use uh, we used uh, this uh, technique for this research now they used uh, the uh, passive okay so to evaluate the room air distribution in a full scale chamber designed to simulate a hospital operating room okay a laser sheet elimination technique was used to identify key features of the room air distribution and particle image velocimetry uh, was used to measure the velocity feed and plane cross section uh, plus crossing the surgical site. Hospital operating rooms require the use of ASHRAE Group E diffusers in an array above 
the uh, surgical table, providing downward unidirectional non-aspirating aspirating, uh, airflow across the sterile region of the room. Okay, so here uh, they mentioned the uh, target and they mentioned also uh, the uh, the way they used okay to uh, carry out the experiment and the standard also is here if it is very important thing in the paper you have to write it here the supply air jet is characterized by complex physics okay this tells the reader that the idea is not easy okay including annular shape impingement buoyancy a large jet to room aspect ratio and recirculation so this is uh, these are the reasons that make the study complex okay the large diameter of the jet relative to the room size makes the overall room air distribution highly sensitive to the parameters of the supply air the air distribution pattern in the room was found to have relatively low velocity and turbulence near the supply air diffuser but increasing the velocity of and turbulence in the shear region at the edge of the supply air jet okay Flow visualization and PIV methods both demonstrated in an angle of the shear layer inward towards the center uh, the jet. Okay, here are some findings or, or some conclusions. Okay, so this flow feature reduces the overall coverage area for the sterile, uh, sterile air flow and may pose a risk to the protection of the surgical patient. So here uh, are some conclusions or some new findings uh, here is the main target and then uh, they talked about the measurements uh, how they uh, took it and then uh, they talk, uh, talked about the uh, standards and the description of the flow is it complex or is it uh, not complex and here is the abstract so it's very easy and you see the coherence and clarity okay then the keywords operating room surgical ventilation airborne infection then I can talk about uh, the same topic but generally and to the point hospital operating rooms they have unique requirements for indoor environment design including sterile uh, airflow sterile Sterile. Okay. What's this trial? For this trial, yes. Uh, the consequences of poor ventilation design in a breathing room can be very severe, leading to higher infection rates among patients and reducing the performance of the surgical staff. Notice uh, that the uh, the number of the words that are used for each sentence must not be uh, high or great okay to uh, make the readers comfortable and uh, <laughs> to make the thoughts uh, clear so after this you can talk about the methods uh, that are used for this uh, point of research generally from the literature and then you can talk about the standards uh, here by uh, Whitecomb and Clapper one so if you go to the references you'll find here G G Whitecomb and W E Clapper Ultra Clean Operating Room, the American Journal of Surgery, Volume 112, number, uh, issue number 5, in 1966, pages 681 uh, to 685, and here is the DOI, okay, you can get the DOI, DOI, what is the DOI, it's digital, object identifier system okay 
and so on you can talk about many uh, papers from two to four also you'll find uh, the references Ashri and so on and then you can talk about the methodology a full-scale operating room chamber was constructed for conducting experiments to measure the fluid and thermal conditions inside the typical operating room. Okay, thank you, I got the point. After this, the chamber consists of, consisted of this dimension. So then you can talk about the dimensions of each uh, component. And then you can talk about the walls and ceiling and tested chamber were constructed with R15. 50 insulation with R30 insulation covering the floor. Here is the detailed description about the test rig. The, the measurements were conducted with a typical temperature of 15 Celsius and so on. And here is the figure full scale laboratory chamber used for evaluation of air distribution via flow, uh, via flow visualization and PIV. And here is the table and the tables that uh, can provide you with the uh, some of the data. Okay, and so on. And here is the particle image velocimetry and flow visualization. And here also uh, another schematic of flow visualization PIV experiment. Uh, layout and you have to uh, to know how to show these things okay after this you can talk about the results the flow visualization uh, initial flow visualization images images showed that the area of the flow field at the perimeter of the diffuser array is critical to the performance of the uh, sterile uh, airfield this region contains a free shear layer and so on here you can talk about what you have seen after carrying out the experiment and so on okay do not talk about dimensions do not talk, talk about anything that you mentioned before okay and each line each sentence must add a new thing a new analysis and also you can mention uh, a reference here okay schematic showing location of image captures for evaluating the flow field over the trial region of the operating room uh, you must be clear you must get high resolution uh, cameras or figures and here are the uh, figures of the images that were taken or were captured okay and here's some velocity vectors of the plane intersecting the centers of the room of trial region above the patient here okay histograms you can use these kind of things and here are the conclusions you only can uh, set the conclusion. This research showed that the airflow pattern in a hospital room, uh, a operating room, with an error air distribution pattern is characterized by the complex physics that caused the jet to contract inward towards the center line and so on. Just talk about what you have seen and what are the conclusions, the main conclusions from the study. Kiss one is better uh, than kiss two. Uh, why? Uh, because blah 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 and this kind of thing. Okay, there are uh, here are wakes and these wakes affect uh, the performance of blah 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 and okay. And there are free shear layer what and so on. After this, you can give the acknowledgments. This work was sponsored under Ashri. 1397RP, Experimental Investigation of Hospital Operating Room, Air Distribution. The authors would like to thank the members of TC 9.6 healthcare facilities uh, of their support of this research project. Okay. And here are the references.
Another paper, gentlemen, uh, about an experimental uh, investigation on a centrifugal pump. Here, the parameter that were uh, that was measured the flow rate meter per second for impeller I, impeller uh, two. Here is uh, twelve point zero seven liter per second, but plus minus the uncertainty analysis. You must include the uncertainty analysis to uh, publish this paper and also the total head because we cannot say that here is the exact number. We cannot say this 26.95 within the uncertainty analysis plus minus 0 0.2657. This uh, is very important to tell the uh, reviewers that the measurements uh, are high quality uh, or high accuracy or low accuracy or what is the accuracy okay and here also for the efficiency also another uh, research paper there are effective ventilation strategies on infection control inside operating uh, theaters uh, we can see here uh, the general view also, the abstract, the introduction, the detailed uh, theater, okay, uh, skin shading, operating theater standards, surgical lights, UCV systems, general modeling approach. Here we uh, will not talk about the, uh, the experiment, no, uh, here is an analytical uh, research so here you must get the mathematical formulation for uh, this engineering research paper. You have here the uh, equations that were used. Okay, the governing equation of the fluid flow equations. It's called Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, you must uh, write it here and so on. And if there is uh, some constants that were used, you have to write it down and define each term you can get it here for where uh, mu is the dynamic viscosity and to have to define each term each term in the equation or you can make it in the nomenclature for uh, some journals there is a section for the nomenclature that contains uh, the definition of each parameter okay no need to uh, write where 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 also here the here transfer module and here is a summary of the simulated cases and the related parameters present in the model you have to be clear and you must take care of the units okay and here is the ventilation options option one option two option three and you have to uh, attach the high resolution uh, images Relation options utilized in the current study. Any image that you uh, that does not, if you did not uh, get this image from your current work, you must mention the reference. Okay. And here is the results again, again, and again. Uh, you can put what you wanna uh, want just to make the reader get, get the point. And please, you have to, how to write the good analysis, or how to analyze your uh, data, it depends on your literature review and how many papers you study, okay? So it is not easy for the beginners to uh, analyze the data or write a technical paper like this uh, very good from the first time so what you have to do is to study many papers at least five to ten research papers to know how the researchers or the professionals analyze the physical phenomena okay there there is a scientific procedure that you must follow okay it's not easy after this, uh, option 2A, and here are some tables and 
some additional plots and velocity vectors images. And also notice that you can represent your data uh, as you like. Okay. And here, of course, we have the conclusions. Uh, you can make it in points. You can cover each point of the paper here. If you use a software, you must mention the software's name. Acknowledgements. Uh, the author would like to acknowledge the technical comments received from Mr. Uh, and Dr. Uh, Mr. And, and Australia, which have enhanced the quality of the presented work. Okay? And here are the references. Another thing that you uh, must know that you cannot copy and paste anything from a published paper and use it as it is in your uh, future paper because uh, this is not allowed, okay? You can describe or write about uh, anything here but using your uh, method, okay? So the objective of the study was to model commercially available UCV systems and more economical alternatives to uh, determine if a satisfactory uh, trial environment can be achieved without UCVs, the study found that. So you can just rewrite this statement, but you uh, can get the same meaning. Rewrite it by yourself. Do not copy and paste. Uh, here is a thesis. We can talk about the thesis at each university. Uh, has its uh, own format for the thesis writing, so you have to get the format and the standards. Here is the acknowledgments, abstract, or the summary. Notice that the order is different from the, uh, the research papers. And here are the uh, table of contents, a list of figures, and a list of tables. Uh, you can put a guide. Chapter 1, Introduction, it's a general introduction, but uh, it takes, it's uh, longer than the research paper, of course. After this, Chapter 2, uh, some assumptions, if you want. Notice the diag diagrams, and if you uh, use any image that uh, you did not draw it, uh, draw it by yourself, you must mention the reference, okay? And each parameter and then here's the summary of this chapter. Uh, here's chapter 3, uh, Assumptions Effects on NCC Effects. It, this is the name of the software that was used and here is the model. Notice that there is no references here. So this is the model of the author. Okay. And here is the detailed description of the uh, settings and setup and his numerical model. And here are some results. Of course, you must get the uh, expressive and uh, good uh, graphs. Do not use all the graphs that you generated through the research. Notice that the number of uh, pages is 80, 83. Chapter 4 study on turbines with different inlet width. Okay, so this is another study, another geometry. Another uh, settings for the mesh, for the numerical mesh. Notice that the, the author used this image, but it is not his image, so he must get the reference. 
so it is it's a big deal it is not easy to uh, write these things uh, from the first time you have to make many drafts many drafts and share it with your professor or your assistant professor or your friends if this is a graduation project to uh, know the recommendations or to send it to any supervisor just to he uh, must read it carefully and tell you some recommendations Chapter 5 here of the conclusions. Notice that the conclusions. This is the first page, second only. And then the recommendations. So the conclusions are not, uh, does not, uh, is not written, the conclusions are not written in many pages. No, just give me the conclusion of the general uh, findings or the trends. And here are the recommendations for the future work. And here the bibliography or the references 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 23, and so on. And here is the final thing. So, thank you very much. This is the thesis. This is the research paper. Okay. So, uh, gentlemen, I think that we covered uh, a very good uh, video here. Uh, the video covered uh, some tips for you for the technical uh, writing. Let's talk about it uh, again here. The common words, words that must be avoided, the abstract, the writing strategies using adject adjectives can make and not center on clauses, coherence, cl collaborative uh, writing, tests of the collaborative writing team and conciseness, conclusions and recommendations and correspondence and uh, accuracy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope this helps you to be able to start for you for your uh, writing. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa